Hey guys, this is the Weed Imperial, and I just wanted to let you know before this video starts that actually this video was recorded like two weeks before it's being uploaded. In fact, maybe even three weeks by the point this video comes out. Uh, so if numbers seem off, that's why. And also, at the very end of the video, I lost my audio, so I'm doing a voiceover for that. If that hey guys, Weed Imperial, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be covering how to go ahead and create your own spigot server hosted off your own computer and this is going to be a bit of a series and my plan is eventually i'm going to start doing plugin spotlights so along with the normal command block tutorials i will be having these plugin tutorials out uh, along with my normal videos and these will probably be like a bi-weekly thing so not something that's going to be coming out every week but something that will come out every once in a while just to cover something because these videos take longer to produce all right so the first step in this and by the way thank you for 309 subscribers it's awesome uh, uh, if we go ahead over here, on Spigot's website, there's something called Build Tools GUI. And what this is, is as it says, it's a Windows application that wraps Build Tools and handles installing dependencies. It's kind of complicated if you don't really know what Build Tools is. So what Build Tools, Tools is, is it's this kind of, um, it's this tool that allows you to install Spigot and Bucket and, you know, everything that runs basically under the Spigot name right now, um, except for the normal build tools, um, well, the normal way to run build tools, I should say, is relatively annoying because you have to deal with command prompt and you have to deal with installing like uh, .NET and uh, and uh, Java development environment, I believe, and all sorts and you know get all sorts of weird stuff. And I don't want you to have to deal with that. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this tool called Build Tools GUI. Now. The one thing I will warn you about before this is that this can take a really long time to run. It took me like over half an hour to get this thing to finish running. Like it's a short, it's a small download, but after you get to run, it can take a while. I just, I'm not having it run on video this time. But anyways, here, I'm just going to switch over because I've already downloaded it and put it in this folder called BTGUI. So you want to put this in its own folder. And let me see, can I make this bigger? Here we go. Um, it's still relatively small, but you know what? Whatever. Um, there we go. Okay. So I did. Here's build tools GUI.exe. If I go ahead and click on it, you'll notice there are a couple of things here. First off, there's a run build tools button. Um, and what that button is for is literally just running it. Uh, don't press that yet. <laughs> uh, automatically check for updates. You can keep that on. Doesn't really matter. Uh, where it says latest, this is one thing you're going to want to change. Um, if you want to get Spigot for a specific Minecraft version, set this. I'm setting mine, for example, to 1.11.2. I don't know if the latest thing exactly works, so I'm purposely setting it to the version I want because it's a lot safer. You're also going to want to press Update Build Tools and wait for that to finish running. If it doesn't do anything, that's fine. And then also go ahead and click Run Build Tools. And when you click Run Build Tools, it'll go through a really long process. Don't worry if it takes like close to an hour. That's fine. Just keep in mind, you're going to probably want to leave this running for a while and then come back to it um anyways so um once you've gone ahead and run that and of course if you haven't run it yet i would just go ahead and pause the video unless you want to see what happens after that once you've done that uh, they will create a folder called build tools and you'll notice there are all these folders with a ton of stuff there's craft bucket and spigot apache Ma maven 3.2.5 all sorts of crazy stuff but there's one thing you do want to do with this, which is going to grab this file called spigot 1.11.2.jar. Go back to a folder. You don't want to run it in the same directory as build tools. For example, I have a folder called server tutorial with this in it. Um, and you're just going to create a new folder called server example for, for me, right? And I'm just going to paste this jar file in there. So now that I have this in here, a lot of people will say, oh, create a new batch file that does, you know, Java, XMX, negative one, or, yeah, 1G, never, you don't need to do that, okay? <laughs> Unless you want to dedicate a specific amount of RAM to the server, which you could Google how to do, you don't need to deal with anything. Just go ahead and run this, and what happens when you run it, and you notice it's taking a little bit to load, is it'll generate a couple of things. It'll generate a folder called logs, and it'll also go ahead and generate a file called eula.txt. Server properties I'll get over in a minute, but currently this is going to do nothing because eula.txt has a file in it that says eula equals false. And what this is, is it's Mojang's eula. Basically the way this works is on any Minecraft server now, this file is automatically generated and what it basically means is that your server won't run until you set this to true. 
by setting it to true, you're agreeing to Mo Yang's EULA, or EULA. And the reason why this is important is because, if you remember correctly before, a lot of servers were just permanently banned from all Minecraft clients, like you could not visit them for Minecraft clients, and they kind of died a little bit. <laughs> um, which was really bad because they weren't complying with Mo Yang's EULA. And, you know, it has to do with ranks and giving players unfair advantages and pricing. But, nevertheless, I w if you need to, give it a read, but it's likely that you're not going to be breaking it. So just that's true. And then, server.properties is also something you want to change. So just click open with, and then go ahead and find yourself notepad. And you'll notice it generates something empty. That's fine, but you'll need this in a little bit. You just want to make sure it'll open up a notepad next time. Okay, so when we run this now, you'll notice some new things will happen. So if we go ahead and wait a minute here, uh, in just a moment, we should see it actually boot up the server. But of course, there we go. <laughs> well, you know, all of a sudden, we have all these new, um, all these new things popping up, including you know, bucket.yml, new world, all sorts of stuff. And I'm not sure. Uh, it's been a while since I've done this. So I'm trying to remember uh, if the GUI will show up yet. But nevertheless, there there will be uh, a GUI that shows up that allows you to access this. Uh, I'm going to double check though on the spigot wiki. Um, but you'll notice again there are a ton of options here. So here for example, um, level name, allow flight, prevent proxy connections, uh, level C, level game mode, all this stuff. Um, and you'll notice it's still generating files so uh, if nothing pops up I wouldn't be surprised. Um, ops. Now ops uh, you're going to want to open in notepad. And this is essentially going to be your file listed, uh, which has all the ops listed in it. Ops are people who could run commands. Um, so you're going to want to add yourself to that at some point. But let me just go ahead and wait for this to finish generating. And then I will be right back. Alright, so I was just looking at the Minecraft wiki again for um, Spigot. I'm wondering why the heck it wasn't popping up. And it looks like what we'll have to do is actually create a run.bat file. I didn't think we would need to do that because I didn't remember needing to do that. But since nothing has been popping up when we're clicking on this, as you could tell, we might need to do that. Let's go ahead though and make sure that nothing launches again. In the meantime though, I'm going to go ahead and launch my Minecraft, because in order to actually test out the server, we're going to need to, of course, be in the game. So I'm going to go ahead here and launch the game, uh, which will take a minute here. And yeah, as you'll notice, Spigot just isn't doing anything. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and create a new file called a bat file. So you're going to right click and click new text document. And sorry by the way, uh, I should have mentioned before, this is only a Windows tutorial. There is possible Mac, but it's a lot more difficult. Uh, I've done it before. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and name this start server.txt. Open it, paste in this Java minus x and x 1024m. Actually, and I'm going to change that from 1024n to 2g and what this is doing here is it's telling it how much ram it could use and a lot of times you'll see m but you could actually use g and make sure that everything's in caps here i'll probably leave this uh, text in the description because um uh essentially if you don't have everything spelled exactly the way it wants it everything can get screwed up but yeah you also want to make sure that you have spigot uh, dash 1.11.2 dot jar um, or whatever yours is named going to then go ahead here and want to save this oops um, let me go ahead and save as and we're going to want to go ahead and save it as start server dot bat or batch set to all files press save and you'll notice here we have a new windows batch file called start server dot bat so yeah, in the meantime, let me press play here. So you notice when I click on start server.bat, this little command prompt window pops up. Yours probably won't be all green like this, but that is how mine is, because I configured my command prompt settings a while ago. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead here and minimize um, that, and my game should go ahead and launch over it in just a moment. Um, and Just make sure that it can run here, because... There we go. So you'll notice, there he goes, how it's supposed to work, uh, and it just closed itself. I'm not sure exactly why, but I'll just go ahead and run it again and see if it works, because I don't know. <laughs> it's 
these weird things you just keep trying until it works but we're just gonna leave it for a little bit until it works and then hopefully be good all right so according to the error message it looks like we might need to open task manager so i'm gonna try and open that up uh you'll see in just a second here on screen uh possibly depending on how fast it is that it'll go ahead and say uh that there was another version of it already running if not that's fine by the way again this is a pre-record or this is um <laughs> this is recorded after i recorded the video because i lost the audio that was originally in the video so if it seems weird um my timing uh then yeah anyways i had multiple of these java platform se binaries running so what i'm doing is i'm going ahead and killing all of them uh, other than what i need and by the way yeah what i should mention is i actually fixed it before this before i started recording again which is why you don't actually see meaning to kill anything but essentially kill anything that says java t uh, tm platform se binary Keep in mind, if you have Minecraft open, it'll also show up as that. But in order to open Task Manager, either press Control alt delete and then Task Manager, or just Control shift escape uh, And then, once you have your server running anyways, and you allow access, what you want to do here is you're going to click Direct Connect. Um, and as a server address, you're going to type in localhost, L-O-C-A-L-H-O-S-T. As you'll see here in just a moment, there we go, oops, localhost. And now I'm going to go ahead and log into the server. And what you'll see in the bottom left there, uh, currently it just says done, uh, type for help, type help or question mark. So there we go. Now it just says UUID of player Dream games is my Minecraft UUID. If you'd like, I could explain what UUID is in a separate video. But um, once this loads up here, there we go. So now I am in the game, which is awesome. Uh, and keep in mind, this will be extremely laggy because that's how um, it works for some reason. By the way, yeah, um, when you first join the server, you won't have access to run any commands. So what you're going to want to do is type into the console, op op space your name. Um, and there you go. You'll notice it'll say opt your name in your actual game. And then you could do, you know... Um, you could run commands. There's a seed on screen right there if you are interested in this seed because this, this world that it auto generated is actually really, really cool. Um, anyways, yeah, again, we're lagging out a lot, which is obviously a huge issue, but we'll just go ahead and continue on here. Um, so now you notice if I do slash PL, it'll tell me my list of plugins. And currently I have zero plugins on here. So it just says plugins, zero, colon, and then nothing. So in order to install plugins, I will create a separate tutorial for you. Um, and of course, once you ha once you are opt, you could go ahead and run any of the commands from my command block tutorial series um, because you have access to run those commands. One thing I should mention is that in your Minecraft directory folder, and this is something I didn't originally mention in the video, or in your folder anyways, there is um, a, a file, I believe it's like options.txt or server properties. I think it's server properties actually. When you open server properties, make sure you find the thing that says enable command blocks and turn that to true instead of false um, because that, will, that is what will allow you to use command blocks if you want to use them. Uh, if not, it might be wise to turn them off just so people can't abuse them. Okay. Anyways, yeah, the reason you're seeing wave games move too quickly is because my computer has trouble handling this. Um, let me see here if I do anything else. I don't think I do. Um, but, let me see here, yeah, it doesn't look like it. Anyways, in order to go ahead and exit out of your server, uh, go ahead, I believe, type stop into, um, into the console and press enter, um, or you could press X, but that may take a bit, uh, longer. You could also use task manager to try and kill it. Here, by the way, was when I thought that, oh, my microphone's muted, I better re-record this. Except for my microphone is muted then, as well. Because I'm a, I apparently fail everything. Um, but anyways, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Sorry that there is no command box tutorial out this week, and hopefully this is a suitable replacement. Again, as I mentioned before, I'm running out of ideas for command block tutorials, so this is what I'm able to do. Um, let me know what plugins you want to see spotlights on. I'm planning to do one for world edit, because that's a huge one. Um, you know, I'm gonna do probably grief prevention, which is the one I use for claiming on my server. Of 
course, I'm gonna do all the big ones, Voxel Sniper. Um, so whichever plugins you want to see tutorials on, just let me know. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye.